ready to go live and we're live that's exciting hello everyone how are you how's it going i'm so excited to see you again for another cambridge social media live training live talks call you whatever you want we will be doing these on a weekly basis. Again, we will be bringing you an amazing, exciting guest expert every single week. We will be talking about anything and everything, social media, marketing, digital marketing for small businesses related. So welcome. Fingers crossed that my Wi-Fi will survive because it's been a journey lately. So. If there are any issues, I apologize ahead. If we crash, we will come back. But without any further ado, I want to introduce you to our first guest, a returning guest, Andy Lambert from Content Cal. Hi, Andy. Hello, Lenka. Hello, good to be back. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, it's exciting. And you have probably one of the hardest jobs ever because you need to keep an eye on all the new trends and updates and changes and then summarize them and translate them to us in a meaningful way. So I will not be taking any more of your time and I will let you do your thing. Thank you very much. Definitely not the hardest job ever. Uh, I think my wife has that because having to homeschool two children. So uh, I think she will take the prize for the hardest job. Uh, but yeah, I'll take the praise. So thank you. Um, if anyone's seen me talk and do this thing before, they'll know in advance and be well prepared that this uh, will be high energy, fast paced. That's why I'm standing up uh, because there's a lot to cover. Um, we last did one of these in November. So much happened in the world of social over the course of last year. It's kind of slightly disorientating because change is happening all the time. So this is the session which Lenka uh, really kindly allows me to, to provide for the community to really just help you within the next hour or so hopefully less I'll speak quickly but um, to really get on top of what's happened in the world of social and digital the changes you need to know and what you can do about it so hopefully this is your kind of monthly check-in so you can go right I know what's happening I know the new things that I can take advantage of and then help inform your strategy going into 2021 I'll make the slides available for everyone. We'll send them out, then I'll figure out a way. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll go from here. So uh, let's start with this. So this is report over the last over the last year, we saw 12% annual growth of social media users. And really, I mean, whilst that, it's hard to understand numbers that are that big, but I think when you look at numbers added in the last month, 450,000 social media users added in the last month, and it helps us understand that, wow, social media is growing at a ridiculous rate. It's now just about 3.5 billion users of social media channels across the world. And bear in mind, there's just over uh, how many people in the world? Around 6 billion. So we're over half the world that's using social. Unbelievable way of connecting us all. So how are people using these social channels for marketing purposes? And it's the focus of this session is all about you know, how we can use social to market our businesses. This is some data out from Hootsuite, which is really good. Um, so Instagram leading the charge and attracting new marketing spend. So on the left-hand side, this is what people are planning on increasing their investment in, Insta and Facebook. YouTube's actually jumped up there and so is LinkedIn. So it's quite interesting to see YouTube taking more of a share. I often talk about it being an underutilized channel, so that's encouraging to see. Um, little bits around like Snapchat and TikTok, to be honest, but it's not gaining like a marketing share of budget as you might expect from everything that's said in the press. On the right-hand side, marketing is doubling, doubling down on well-established platforms. So when you start to ask marketers about what are the channels that actually get you the reach, very much Facebook and Instagram dominate uh, with then followed by LinkedIn and Twitter. So you can actually see that you know, it's, it's important that we don't get too distracted by all of the new shiny glossy things that we will cover today because there are some real tried and tested uh, areas and channels that drive results. So, you know, all that glitters isn't gold, basically. Uh, this was another interesting study that came off the back of that one, which is about multi-channel campaigns show a 35% uh, effectiveness improvement. So essentially what that means is that if you were just running a campaign just on Facebook, by adding each additional channel, the data according to analytics partners shows a 35% improvement for each additional channel. So if you think you're putting something out on Facebook, make sure you're considering it across multiple different social channels. Uh, Insta, LinkedIn, Twitter, et cetera, and also considering multiple different formats as well. So it might be email or your blog, for example. 
So whatever piece of content you're creating, think repurposing, think multi-channel, because the more channels you put your content in, the bigger your ROI will be. And I thought this data was actually really interesting to, to demonstrate that numerical value of 35% uh, improvement. The rise of forgotten demographics. We often talk about millennials, Generation X or Z or whatever. I forget what they're all called. Um, but actually, over the last year, over 70 percent um, of 55 to 64 year olds. Actually, this is January data. Sorry. Uh, over 70 percent of 55, to 64 year olds have bought something online in the last month. So it just goes to show that there's a lot of buying power in this demographic. So if you know if you're marketing your business, whatever business that you're in, small, large, whatever, um, and you think, actually, well, social doesn't work for me because we market I don't know, care homes, we market you know, hearing aids, whatever. I'm being incredibly, uh, <laughs> excuse my examples, right? But whatever we're marketing, right, depending on, on, the, on the age demographic, don't forget digital and social because clearly um, this demographic have fantastic purchasing power and the amount of them buying things online because all of the all of the behavior change has been forced upon us. So, and this is gonna continue over the course of 21, which is the reason that's driving all of this social media and e-commerce growth. It's all driven by everything that's that's happening in the world right now. And we're gonna to continue to see that trend. So don't forget any demographics. Everyone basically is on social now. Brand purpose continues to be crucial. These studies are always a bit flawed in my view because essentially if you ask someone, if I asked Linka, would you buy for a brand that you agreed with their values or don't agree with their values, you would typically say, yeah, I'd rather buy with her for a brand that I agree with the values. I think some, sometimes this is a bit flawed um, because we all, I think deep down we all don't like Amazon, but most of us still buy products from Amazon. But Brand purpose on a social media perspective continues to be critical. And I think the top point is a really important one. So brand operating to its values and principles, basically brands living their ambition. Patagonia is a fantastic example of that. They talk lots about the circular economy in their content. They talk lots about sustainability. And lo and behold, they're the first brand that now are allowing uh, previous purchases of their clothes to bring them back into stores so they can be resold as used clothes. It's the first clothing brand to start reselling used clothes. And I love that. IKEA are on a similar trajectory. And also the same thing if you if you follow um, a guy, uh, the CEO James from, from Brewdog, the, the beer company, obviously UK based and you know they have very a very strong sustainability mission they use social as a platform for that and it helps drive so much affinity to the brand as you can see through this data so be really clear about your me your mission and your purpose because ultimately that helps drive uh, affinity across a target audience the return of organic marketing uh, both makes Lenka and me smile. I expect this was data that's B2B orientated, so business marketing to other businesses through the Content Marketing Institute. But the top five things here are all critical. People investing more in content creation, in websites, in digital events, in content distribution, organic and paid, and in social media and community building. This is businesses now that typically have always orientated towards having a sales team doing cold calls or doing trade shows and events. Businesses are dramatically pivoting how they're marketing to other businesses, looking and turning to or an organic community to build that. So through the through the rise of events and virtual events that we've all seen to the rise of like audio first tools, be it clubhouse, be it podcasting, Organic marketing for businesses is very much where their investment's going to be going and a huge amount of investments happening around content creation. So if people are on this that are uh, content writers or social media managers, etc., cetera, um, this is a good time to be talking to, to B2B businesses because there is, for the amount of content they want to create, there's clearly lacking the resource to do it. So other trends that you need to be aware of that can help you. 73% um, of people more likely to buy if they see an explainer video. That will also sit nicely with the fact that we saw just a couple of slides back an increasing investment in YouTube. So video remains to be critical. The second one's really interesting. So nearly three quarters of CFOs are looking to make remote work permanent for all or some employees. Now, you might see that's a bit of a you know, one that we shouldn't really cover in a session like this, but I think that has a fascinating dynamic for how people will be using social media, right? Because if businesses and employees from businesses spend more time at home, they have more time on social, they have more time to watch webinars, they have more time to engage with white papers and podcasts or clubhouse or whatever it might be. 
And that is going to be transformative to how our content is consumed. And it also plays really nicely into the chart that we just saw where businesses are recognizing that actually, you know, people are going to be at home a lot. They're going to spend more time look, browsing the web, educating themselves. So that's why people are investing more in organic content creation. Third point, 71% of people refer buying with companies with similar values to them. That just reiterates that other data we saw earlier. In the last year, online video consumption has doubled from an average of three hours to nearly seven hours per week. Once again, investment in video become critical. Now, the last two are massive. Consumers under 34 um, account for over three or over a third of purchasing in the UK. You know, so whilst I have said about the importance of don't forget those older demographics, that that demographic of under 34 year olds representing a third of purchasing in the UK, which would probably be social first. So it goes to show the power of it in social and commerce. We're going to talk lots about that because ultimately this single factor is driving so much of those these changes and new updates across these social platforms. And finally, 54 percent of e-commerce is expected to be driven by mobile into 2021. Wow. Now that is big. You know, e-commerce, which we know is absolutely massive. Thank you, Amazon, for, for that. Um, but the fact that this will start to be driven by mobile starts to really lead into how people are going to be engaging with social, engaging with content through social and making purchases through social. We're going to see the dawn of something I talk about quite a lot, but it's called social commerce. And for me, I'm really excited about this because it starts to level the playing field, allowing smaller businesses to kind of have an opportunity to to get themselves heard on social channels and drive purchasing rather than it just being dictated by the horrendous monopoly that is Amazon. But yeah, you know, I might I might have that viewpoint on Amazon, but I still use it most days. Anyway, most popular social networks. Um, this is data actually from October because I can't find anything latest, but it gives you an idea of like this is about daily active users, which is the most important metric, right? How many people are on? I don't think there's any huge surprises. There'll be ones you don't recognize because they're typically more um, Chinese focused uh, variants. But realistically, you know, the huge ones are on Facebook and YouTube. We often forget YouTube, two, two billion daily active users, but it's not considered enough in people's content strategies. So, yeah, YouTube is is critical. So with that, that's the trends. That's a bit of a whistle stop tour of what's happened over the last two months. Um, digital trend wise and how this is going to start impacting our businesses, the broader economy. And also now we're going to go on to how this is impacting all of the individual social media channels and the changes they've made as a result. Start with my fave, LinkedIn. With each of these platforms, I'm going to tell you the best times to post on each of these. So based on this data, always go with your own data. However, this is my caveat to this. If you don't have any data about best time to post, uh, then go with this. But if you've got data that says something to the contrary based on your previous performance, ignore what I show you and go with what, what is unique to you. So that's the caveat. Anyway, best days on LinkedIn, middle of the week. Um, Saturday and Sunday don't get the, the same amount of engagement. However, Saturday and Sundays on LinkedIn don't um, don't not consider them um, because they actually drive really good engagement for lighter topics. So actually, I've, I've seen people perform really well on, on Saturday and Sunday, actually, because there's less competition for new seats, feed space. And actually, in the mornings of the weekend does actually work well. But fundamentally, and I've seen this middle of the week, 10 to 11 works well. Lots of data on LinkedIn, actually. So there's some interesting things. Um, page Company page reach is dropping, um, but the uh, personal profile content is still doing quite well. Um, so that's an important strategic thing to think about. If all your content is going to your company page, think about folding into your personal profile into that because that's the one that drives engagement. Click through rate has gone up, which kind of feeds into the fact that more people are at home. They're not at, in an office at work, so they're not browsing LinkedIn. People are spending more time browsing LinkedIn now, which means the click through rate has increased, which means better results for businesses. Average engagement rate has increased to 6%, which is a 1% year on year improvement. Um, average engagement rate ranges between one to 13 percent. If so, if you want to look at yours, engagement rate is uh, impressions divided by followers. So um, so so impressions divided by engagement. Apologies. So we, we want to understand actually how's our company page doing. So if you want to run that analysis, uh, that's always a good thing to do to benchmark. 706 million members, uh, only about 50% of them, only, only about 50% of them are active. So it's about 350 uh, million people that log in every day. 
55 million companies. This, the, but the next two, next three are kind of interesting points. 55% more conversation. So there's there's more happening on LinkedIn. There's more content being created, 60% more. And the biggest marketing ROI is anyone who's operating in technology, financial services, or education. So um, some good stuff within LinkedIn, actually. So LinkedIn is, is performing really well organically still. LinkedIn's new features, ability to create and subscribe to newsletters. This actually wasn't out in December or January. It was before, but I missed it. So if you have uh, something regular that you want to say, so if you already operate a newsletter within your business, think about how you might want to fold in LinkedIn newsletters, because now you can have people subscribe explicitly to them and serve that content directly through LinkedIn. A great way to target a specific subset of people. So if people aren't opening their emails, it's a great way for you to, to improve distribution of your newsletter through LinkedIn. That's available now. A launch of post controls. So you can now control who can see your content as well as who can comment on your content. This is a similar move to what Twitter did a couple of months back, and it helps people post content in the safe space. So without fear of reprimand um, and the comments that will come back, you can now start to post, uh, especially if you're doing kind of company posts and you don't want people to respond, you can now limit that with post controls. Uh, product pages are coming out, but not available for everyone yet. For anyone that sells a product like we do at Content Cal, which is a business to business software, this is really powerful because essentially it allows your own product to have its own destination, its own page on LinkedIn, allows you to collect reviews, allows you to collect customer testimonials. And I think this is going to be really powerful. I'm really excited about this because it's going to really help facilitate reviews and testimonials for us. Uh, stories on LinkedIn, um, they've now added the ability to add links so people can swipe up on a LinkedIn story and view that link. So that's that's powerful. And that's going to really help improve conversion. Definitely one to test. Limitation of it. So the caveat here, it's only available to people with more than 5,000 followers. So unless you're kind of John Asperian, um, you know, you, you might not have this on your own personal profile, but it is available on all company pages. So it might be one to try. Uh, Instagram, so best times to post Monday, Thursday and Wednesday, um, either at lunchtime here or in the afternoons. So uh, Wednesday in particular is the best day, apparently Sunday being the worst. So all of this will come to you anyway. So I'll, I'll run through this, but we, we've got to keep on going. Um, Shopping comes to reels. They've been promising this for a while, but this is a really powerful thing. This plays into the whole kind of e-commerce thing. The fact that, you know, uh, a third of all commerce is driven from uh, under 34s and the fact that 54% of commerce is going to be driven through mobile. Those two killer stats that we mentioned at the beginning, absolutely playing into Instagram strategy here. They've, they've stolen a bit of a march on TikTok here because TikTok don't have this native shopping functionality. But here you could watch something on Reels or you could post something of, you know, you demonstrating a product and people can purchase it directly through product tags. So that's available now. Also, Reels is getting a lot of updates because it was massively behind the curve um, with TikTok. So there's a lot more kind of creation uh, functions to simplify how we can create content. So the latest update is about audio editing, where you can add your own voice to, to voice over something and also use a library of uh, audio content. So a library of tracks for you to add to your reels. They've introduced a professional dashboard. It's available now. So if you have a business account on Instagram, you could go to your professional dashboard. It will tell you analytics, how you compare against your competition, also give you suggestions for how you might improve ideas of other stickers that you could use. So it's actually quite a nice check just so you can have a look if Instagram is your thing, have a look at your professional dashboard and it will give you some hints and tips. So yeah, top tip there. Facebook. Um, Always towards the end of the week, Facebook works really well. And actually, Saturday and Sunday is a, was an interesting one for me because we don't post anything at the weekend. But actually, you know, seeming here, we've got the, the best and the highest level of engagements happening on a Saturday and Sunday, particularly during 1 to 4 p.m. So you might want to consider this in your posting schedule to make sure you're factoring in days you might not often have considered, certainly from our perspective. Fundraising tools. So for anyone working in the charity or third sector, um, Facebook have done a fantastic amount with fundraising uh, of late. So not only have they got like donation stickers, the ability to run a personal fundraiser, um, but now you can start uh, sharing these fundraisers directly in a feed or a story, allowing people to, to donate directly uh, to a chosen cause. 
Incidentally, Facebook have been responsible for over a hundred million dollars of donations to charities all through these fundraising tools, all of which they've they've developed since last March. So um yeah, kudos to them because that's actually a fantastic tool for people that want to raise money. Um, you know, considering that many charity charitable endeavors have really struggled. Uh, Facebook and iOS 14. Now, this is a bit a bit more kind of nerdy, and for those people that are doing Facebook advertising. This is a, a big challenge for advertisers because if anyone's updated their iPhone to iOS 14, you'll notice that it's very explicit that you can see in the right-hand side screenshot here, very explicit around what it's gonna allow you to track. So typically Facebook advertising has all been built of the fact that, let's say you were browsing a shop, you're browsing some shoes on, I don't know, next.com. Now, naturally, next thing you find out, you're going onto Instagram, scrolling through, and hey, presto, there's what you had in your basket, you know, being retargeted to you. Now, that has been a staple of digital marketers, like toolkit, right? So driving intent, retargeting to drive purchase. But now with iOS 14, you it's going to be very explicit to say, do you want Facebook to track you or not? Do you want Instagram to track you? Whatever app. Uh, and if you say no, that's going to make Facebook advertising distinctly less accurate. It's going to mess up retargeting campaigns. So uh, I'm no expert on Facebook advertising, but that's definitely one to keep an eye on because it will be challenging. Anyone works in the automotive space, they've uh, relate, released a whole new load of tools for automotive advertisers. In fact, there's a huge, I can't remember the, the statistic, but so much, so many car sales actually are initiated or done through social now, which is fascinating for such a high ticket price item. But what you can see in front of you is they're, they're allowing like a kind of auto tradery type inventory. So uh, car dealers, manufacturers can list their whole inventory and allow people to search them. So as you can see, Facebook had obviously seen a big opportunity here and made it easier for those automotive advertisers. This is one I, that is applicable for most people actually, and I love this, branded collabs manager expands to public Facebook groups. What that basically means is made it easy for you to find other groups that are public facing that you could potentially work with. So here's a good example of what we're doing right now is that Lenka and I have become friends over the years, but Lenka runs Cambridge social media community, right? And ultimately for, for business like ours, we want to be able to share understandings and uh, our experiences of social media marketing. So it works really well to work in collaboration with someone who runs a group on Facebook like Lenka. So that's really useful. Well, I only found Lenka by chance you know, back, I can't even remember how long ago it was now, but um, here, what this will allow you as a, as a business to find groups, let's say you are, you know, you run a cleaning company, you'll find groups for, for uh, cleaning tips or household chore tips or whatever. And you can find now an opportunity through Branding Collabs Manager to work with those group owners to, to try and collaborate on some content that will both add value to your business and add value to that community. A fantastic way to get your content and your brand seen in channels you wouldn't have otherwise had access to. So this is a powerful one available now. Uh, changes to Facebook pages, you might have seen this already. They've removed the likes, only followers, and they've made it focus more on interaction. There's um, a focus on the Q&A section within pages and a focus on the stuff that's gonna be shown in the pages newsfeed now is more around like the comments that the page will leave, the, the your you as a page has left on other posts. So actually much more focus on delivering that interaction, encouraging pages really to comment on content, encouraging Q&A, encouraging interaction. So that's that's the main focus of Facebook. So um, going on to Twitter, it's all about during the week and it's all about the, the lunchtime hour for where, uh, where you're gonna get results. Uh, they've launched audio spaces and they've integrated it with Fleets. As a reminder, uh, Fleets is their approach to stories, which is available now. I wouldn't necessarily spend much time thinking about it unless you're already quite big on Twitter. Well, when I say big or you, you have a reasonable base on Twitter, then I would consider it. Uh, but Audio Spaces is their approach to Clubhouse. I've mentioned Clubhouse a few times. It's very much, well, it's very overhyped, to be honest. But ultimately, there's there's a few bets happening at the moment that the, the future of social is actually going to be audio first. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, maybe we'll have a discussion about Clubhouse at the end. Uh, I've got a few spare invites if anyone wants one. Bear in mind to, to see what all the fuss is about. Anyway, on to Pinterest. 
uh, all about the weekend on Pinterest and all about the evening. So that clearly when kids have gone to bed and people looking at inspiration for their house, inspiration for dinners and foods, that that kind of creative endeavor um, as very much serves at the weekend. But Pinterest, to be fair to them, and they, they, they don't get fair credit as far as I'm concerned, because like with Snapchat, they are the most forward thinking social media channel. So if you are in a B2C type of uh, orientated business and you focus on anything with to do with the household or anything to do with food or exercise or very consumer driven stuff, uh, you really do need to be on Pinterest. And I don't say that lightly about many things. But what I love about Pinterest, for me, they're going towards what I would class as the panacea of um, social commerce. Really, the, the amazing opportunity that they're now offering, the fact that you could be scrolling content. And bear, don't forget, Pinterest content is discoverable via search as well. So via Google search. So let's say you were looking for a new eyeshadow to use this example. And bear with me with this example. I'm not a professional eye, eye, <laughs> eyeshadow shopper. So let's say you were looking for, for some eyeshadow. Um, Pinterest is going to be brilliant at, at pulling back a whole load of inspiration from certain shops and vendors that are that are offering that. Now you can click on this and you can start to look at that individual's stories. Don't forget stories are now available on Pinterest because you can look at the creator of that, that brand. So this small business that, that's offering these eyeshadows, you can get to learn about the brand and what they stand for. Now with these augmented reality try-on tools, as you can see in the middle screenshot, if you like one of these um, these shades, these eyeshadow shades, we could, you can start to try them on in augmented reality. So you can see, does that color suit you? Then you can make those purchases directly. You could either save it for inspiration later that you can see in this third screenshot, or you could shop it and buy it directly off Pinterest. What an incredible experience that is for like mobile first commerce. And honestly, this has an opportunity to really trounce Amazon. And I'm excited about that because it levels the playing field for smaller businesses that you can get, firstly get discovered on something like Pinterest, find those different products that are, are right for you. You as a business can really start portraying yourself as and portraying your values through stories and such. People can discover and save those items and they can purchase those items directly after trying them on. What an amazing experience that is. And honestly, like, you know, Pinterest and Snapchat are very much leading the curve. And to be honest, I think this is the direction of where uh, mobile and social commerce is going. Um, so it's kind of similar story a little bit with with YouTube. Um, so they're testing some automatic chapters. Uh, unless you're doing YouTube, that doesn't mean anything to you at the moment, but helps you organize long form video into multiple different chapters. They're adding product tags to, to video for e-commerce functionality, not available for everyone yet. But that means that like we just saw with uh, with Instagram Reels and with with Pinterest, if you're talking about a particular product in a video, you can tag that product and allow people to make purchases of that product directly from that video without leaving um, the, the content itself, the perfect marriage of content and commerce. They're launching hashtag pages. So if you're on YouTube already or you're starting to, to use YouTube as a strategy, definitely look at these hashtag pages so you can see what hashtags and what types of content is, is trending. Uh, YouTube Shorts is delivering fantastic results for those creators. You can see, I don't know if you can actually see that, but some view counts are up in the 14 million range. Um, it's very much getting the same level of traction as TikTok, but the key difference here is Shorts isn't available to everyone, only with people with 10,000 subscribers. So that's out of the way of most mere mortals. If you're on YouTube, however, best time to post Thursday and Friday, really to post early, getting re your content ready for the weekend, which is where the viewing happens. So mentioned TikTok a few times. Um, this business got awarded best SMB use of, of TikTok. So I think it's a good example actually for small businesses to use. So if you look at lucky to live here, if you have a TikTok account, it's a really nice approach and actually a reasonably you know, achievable approach for a real estate agent uh, using TikTok to market their products so and market their business. They do a really good job. And I think that sets a really nice precedent that actually small businesses can make it work and you don't have to do everything through the medium of dance. Um, they've also launched a small business resource center, which again, if you're starting to think about TikTok, definitely want to have a look at to inspire you with some creative direction you could take. And TikTok is also, it's on its way to 1 billion users, which is insane. It'll be the fastest app to hit 1 billion users um, and it surged past Facebook in time spent on the app. So average time people spend on Facebook app per month is 16 hours and uh, TikTok is now 20 hours. So, you know, the growth isn't going anywhere. 
Uh, TikTok's also launched a TV app in partnership with Samsung. So if you have a smart TV, you'll know that you can have apps on there. Um, so TikTok have launched one of those. And I think it's a really smart move, actually. It allows people to kind of consume content in a much more passive way, just like they're watching TV and be just shown content in the feed. And this is also going to really help TikTok just get bigger and bigger because it's it's a very different approach to social. It's kind of similar to YouTube in this way, where you could just put on a video and it would just carry on showing you content, which isn't the same for the other channels. Other When I say other channels, I mean other social platforms. And they're launching a new Q&A feature as well, just to encourage more audio uh, audience interaction. Onto Google, it's not social media specifically, but we do need to factor it into our social media campaigns. Um, so this is just a test at the moment, but I think it's a really interesting signal is that they're testing adding short videos to search results. So this was um, found early January where some people's search results had these short videos from Insta and TikTok, etc. So it goes to show actually how your social content can in the future start to impact your SEO and search results. So really interesting one to, to note. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, On to WhatsApp. Only one thing from WhatsApp. Um, but for, from an e-commerce business perspective, definitely one to consider. This is a, available on WhatsApp business. This example is a good one to use. So someone could be on Sandra's Cakes website. Um, and remember, you can have like the WhatsApp messenger on your on your website if you want to. It allows people to interact with you. When they interact with you, let's say this is Sandra's Cakes, you know, you have now the ability to have your full product inventory through WhatsApp. So, you know, if someone's gone to your website, they've clicked this little chat button. That then opens up WhatsApp, of which they can then start to look at your inventory. It's called a catalog on WhatsApp. People can look through the products that you have that you're offering. They can chat with you to say, oh, is this in stock? Could you do this in you know, different flavors, colors or whatever? And now it allows you to add that to a cart and purchase directly through WhatsApp. So from a consumer perspective, an amazing experience because they don't have to leave WhatsApp. They can do the interaction. They can buy things with without having to go through lots of different tools. And from a business perspective, so if, if it suits a business like yourselves, that's a fantastic opportunity and a real nice way to smooth the checkout experience uh, for your users. Once again, reinforcing this whole kind of mobile commerce thing. On to Snapchat. Uh, I was going to see how we're doing for time, but I can't find my phone. Anyway, um, some really interesting, even if Snapchat's not your thing, I think the dynamics in this are really interesting. So this is from Snapchat's report uh, that they, they put out in January. So Snapchat reaches 90% of 13 to 24 year olds in the UK, 90% insane. And apparently that this generation between 13 to 24 is the largest generation in history. I had no idea. Um, 249 million daily active users in the UK, uh, which is an 18% year on year increase. 60% are open to paying more for sustainable clothes. Seems a random one to put down there, but actually that talks perfectly to what we were talking earlier about that brand's um, Individuals have more of a tendency to purchase from brands that share a similar purpose and all values to them. And it goes to show actually this this generation, actually, without wanting to make too many generalizations um, around a, gen a generation, actually has a more cognizance about does a brand do good and do I want to purchase from them? So I think that's actually a really interesting dynamic to think about. 180 million people engage with augmented reality each day. But the fact is, it doesn't feel like augmented reality, just like we saw with Pinterest, like a virtual try on is, is great. Oh, great. I can see what this eyeshadow looks like. And that's what people are doing every day. 60% um, of people uh, in the UK make online purchases through Snapchat. So it goes to show that this demo demographic are perfectly happy with making purchases on their phone off the back of content that's produced. Lots of people watching video and as with Pinterest, virtual try-ons are the most popular format. So from a retail brand, Snapchat and Pinterest are, are very much leading the e-commerce charge and they're setting the precedent for what we'll see Facebook, well, Instagram will be the next to follow, but Instagram, YouTube and Facebook will all be following this trajectory of, of social commerce. Clubhouse um, release, raises new funding. So there's now valued at a billion dollars and they're now starting to monetize it for creators. As I said, um, jury's out a bit on Clubhouse. I mean, it's it's overhyped, but there is good opportunity in it. There's, there's a lot that's happening around audio first social. So we do need to think about it. So Twitter's audio spaces, they bought a podcasting app called Breaker. Um, and then there's a product called Discord as well, which has 100 million users, uh, which used to be a gaming focused community. But now it's like this audio social networking for everyone. 
So you might not have heard about that. Um, it's obviously a lot bigger than Clubhouse, but it hasn't got the same PR. Um, so yeah, jury's out. We can talk about that uh, another time. Um, also happy for Q&A, but we have made it. Congratulations if you made it this far. Um, if you do want to kind of go a bit deeper into how do all of these changes, how can I implement them in my business? I, I run a whole load of, of strategy sessions. So these are free drop-in strategy sessions. So you're welcome to be part of them. Uh, I run them, I think, two a week, I typically do. So if you want to be part of that, you're welcome. Uh, but otherwise, I hope this was useful. And any questions, I'm here for you. Lenka, if you're there. Wow, yes, I'm just taking a deep breath because this was always such a jam-packed session. Uh, great content. We got great comments in the chat and everything. So I will go ahead with the questions. First question is talking about Clubhouse. Uh, I know that Alex is all about Clubhouse. He's really into it right now. So he's asking about Clubhouse IPO. Uh, yeah, uh, well, not, yeah, it won't. It's not going to list for a little while because it's just just literally raised this funding uh, and they'll want to list at somewhere well north of, of a billion. That's for sure. You know, in, in an industry like this, it seems crazy where a billion actually isn't that much. Um, it's just insane. So it will get it will get big. Um, and I think like I say it's overhyped, but I do. I have I'm sp finding myself spending about an hour on it per day. I need to probably join some of Alex's rooms because they'll probably be better. It like like of anything, it's like trying to trying to curate your feed um, and find the right people to follow. For me personally, um, I love longer form, like deeper content. So actually, I mean, for that reason, I love I am enjoying Clubhouse, I would say. But yeah, will it will it stick and stand the test of time rather than it just being a novelty? I think there the jury's definitely out on that, because once we can start to go out of our houses and do more fun things, I, I expect to see there, there'll be a, a chink in its growth. That's for sure. Absolutely. It's an interesting place to be. Definitely something to, if you have the time or if you have the headspace and if you have the ability to join in, it's interesting for me. It replaced watching Facebook lives and listening to podcasts. So for me, I replaced one type of consumption with this. Yeah. But in terms of the long term business strategy purpose, that's still early to say. We had a question about kind of talking about the older demographics. And I think it was Tana who was asking, is this number of all the demographics more dominant on a particular channel? Great question. And a particular channel is Facebook, definitely. Um, although if you look at the TikTok's demographics, they are changing. Um, and you can just, I haven't covered that in this session, but like for any channel, just search like TikTok demographics and you'll find data related to it. We know Facebook is, is the platform. Um, that you'll find the, the slightly older demographics um, on, to be honest. Uh, but I don't have any particular data to back that up any further. Yeah, okay. Interesting question from Claire asking about Facebook fundraising tools. Mm -hmm. uh, do you need to work this from a business page or can it be done by an individual? Do you have any insights into who, how can set up the fundraising and work with the fundraising tools? Great. So whilst I don't know all of the specifics offhand, because it's not something that we need to use. Um, so I would definitely just Google Facebook fundraising tools. And there are there are whole heaps of resources about that. Um, but you can do this from a personal um, profile as well. So not necessarily a company page. That's the thing I do know. Awesome. Another kind of a question where to find what is question about professional dashboard on Instagram, which is, I'll be honest, this is the first time I'm hearing about it as well. And <laughs> where do you find it? Um, to, to be honest with you, I had to Google it to, to be shown where to find it. So, um, so that's going to be my answer on this one. Google, because there's a whole support document around it, because I, I just found it through browsing Facebook support documents. It was not marketed at all. Um, so I found it by accident. So if you you just Google um, it's Instagram. Interesting find it. because I open my Instagram app and it's actually hiding in a plain sight. It's straight on top of your profile. There is a click link that says your profile. It's there on your <laughs> profile on the top. It is there. I open my app. 
was doing the same thing. Like, where is it? And I'm like, view a professional dashboard. It's straight in your face. Amazing. That we don't read. <laughs> it, I don't know how long it's been there, but literally now I opened it up and it's like, it's staring at me. There you go. There you go. Change it. The thing is, it's, there's there's a micro change nearly every day, and and it will vary between different apps. Everyone's going to be on slightly different versions because they test stuff all the time. So, yeah, all that stuff is fascinating. That's for sure. But they yeah. do roll out the features on a different basis, and I do have like five different Instagram accounts for my clients and for myself. And for example, for my own personal creator account, I still don't have reels. But oh, really? for I do get all the features immediately, which is so frustrating. And for my clients, I can do use all the features. For myself, I can't. So I can't practice on myself. I have to practice on my clients. Oh, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. But yeah, it just, it's a perfect example of this is a challenge. It's like all of this, all this stuff, and everyone's going to have slightly different capabilities. But they all eventually roll out to everyone. But I'm very surprised you don't have reels, thank you. <laughs> That's for sure. I'm surprised too, but honestly, I've re realized that for my personal account, there's something wrong. I do have it as a creator account. Um, but yeah, I usually get the features like two years later. <laughs> Just frustrating. It takes forever to get <laughs> Oh, no. Um, another question is, if, is there a certain amount of posts per week you can recommend for LinkedIn or just to extend the question to any of the platforms is there something of that sort that you could recommend on a general basis um for linkedin i can i can speak to that um and bear in mind any of this kind of advice is very time specific because it, it can change with the changes on platforms so it's always worthwhile you know that's why we do this thing every month because there are slight changes so i'll speak to linkedin um, I used to do one post a day, but I now get better results over the course of a week doing three posts a week. Um, the reason for that is because LinkedIn's really good at serving stuff um, after the day that it's been posted. So on typical other platforms, you've only got you know a, a small time window for people to engage with it, so it'll be shown to more people. Where on LinkedIn, it's, it's a lot more generous with organic reach. So for example, like I'll post Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, but the reason like the most important post I put out is on a Tuesday, which is my kind of video thing that I do, but actually giving it an extra day where I haven't posted anything in between because every time you post, you're now competing with yourself as to what LinkedIn's going to be showing. So now I've given it an extra day that allows that video post that I do on a Tuesday to get more traction, get more comments, uh, and then as a result, get a whole heap more views. So in fact, I've seen a 50% increase in the views of the posts I put out on every Tuesday um, now that I don't do a post on a Wednesday. So hopefully that gives you a bit of anecdotal evidence. Yeah, absolutely. One of the questions we've got before, and I will be nicely playing into your court, is what are the updates to the most popular scheduling apps and which one would you recommend? <laughs> um, well, yeah, I'm far too biased because, well, one, I won't know all of the updates that's happened to all of our competitors. I'll recommend Content Cal because... I'm, I can't ever not. Um, but yeah, there's there's a whole, I won't go through all the updates because this is not a content cow specific session, uh, but the the two things that you, you do need to know is that uh, we now support like blogs and emails to be created through content cow. So it's not just social, it allows you to create all of the content. And uh, next week we launch a new community management platform, um, which will be really good for, for encouraging more interaction and better engaging with your community. Uh, oh, and thirdly, there's going to be a, a huge update to analytics, uh, which will be out within the next month. So some, some very exciting stuff happening this end. Um, but yeah, that's all I'll say about Content Cal, because you know where to find us. Um, and we're always happy to take you on a tour if you need it. Yeah, which is exciting, because the moment I asked the question, I saw that we have a comment from Eva asking about Content Cal, uh, if any of the social media updates force you guys to make big changes at your end. And stuff like that. so good thinking eva we're there at the same page um exactly. one of the questions that definitely keeps coming back it's towards facebook advertising and his uh their issue with apple mm -hmm. so could you just give us a quick update on where you stand and what it is, does it mean for us so uh i think probably everything that that i said when i covered like the ios 14 update just 
just earlier in this session kind of stands. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, it's, it's going to have a massive issue. And I think, to be honest, there's we're going to see a lot of this battle between some a few tech giants, Google, Apple, Facebook. We're going to see some battles between all three of them. That won't be pretty. Um, so I think it's just it's one for us to keep an eye on. In terms of the full implications of the iOS 14 update, um, I don't know because I'm no advertising professional. I would definitely recommend you reading more into it. The long story short, however, is the people are very now wary of the data that businesses hold on them, especially Facebook. You can thank the Netflix documentaries for that. And rightly so. It's nice that people are fully aware of that. Um, and it's, it's just going to mess up retargeting models predominantly um, because now you won't be able to track people and serve them relevant content. For me, I see, I see it as a bit of a shame, to be honest, because being served stuff that you're interested in is actually a useful thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but hey, that's just that's just my opinion. And, you know, Apple are really very much taking a stand and they know that this is a direct swipe at Facebook. So, yeah, yeah. it's a bit political. Yeah, definitely is. And obviously there is a cost for having personalized advertising, having everything to be served to you based on your preferences there is a cost that you can't have one or without the other you either have to be willing to share your data or not get such a great targeting for content yeah so it will, it will ultimately mean there'll be increased cost per click basically because we won't be as targeted so we can't serve micro audiences well enough so that if we're not collecting the data to know exactly who our audiences are we're going broader with our message we and naturally conversions will go down when conversions go down our cost per click will end up going up so yeah it will increase the price of advertising i would expect yeah continuing with slightly political conversation alex is asking what are your thoughts on whether facebook will be forced to carve up their ownership of other platforms and if then what to happen your opinion on this um to be honest i don't i don't know it's all conjecture so um i probably i don't really want to comment too much on things that i i don't know for certain um i think the only thing i will say is that you would i would have thought that facebook with three billion active users um or three billion users not all active with three billion users you'd think they're too big to fail what you've just seen now is that the, the biggest chink in facebook's armor is the fact that everyone accesses facebook through a phone so if Google and uh, Apple start to turn the screw on Facebook, then that's, that does create a very interesting dynamic. That's for sure. Um, yeah, so nothing's going to change this year. Uh, I don't know. I think conjecture, there's going to be a lot more press around this stuff. But fundamentally, I think as business owners, I, I put this out of my mind because ultimately we'll still continue as, as we are. It's not going to change anything in the, in the short term other than advertising. So, so I try not to concern myself too much with it, if I'm honest. Awesome. I will encourage everyone, if you have another question, leave it in the comments. We have a couple minutes. Um, if not, I have one closing question to you, Andy, and that out of all those news and updates and changes, when it comes to you as a part of a startup, as a small business owner, what would be the number one challenge? kind of change that really seems important and impactful for 2021 going forward in your perspective? I'll pick two, because one, we serve a B2B business. So um, the data that I showed you about the importance of businesses starting to invest more in organic content. So so naturally that's that's great because we love community building as you do too, Lenka. So um, I'm really excited about the fact that there's gonna be a diminished, um, like everyone just went to paid advertising just because I was like, oh, brilliant. It's, it's easy to do. Chuck some money in Facebook and, you know, get some clicks. But actually, I think what we've seen is a bit of a, a shift in this where it's actually about long term brand growth. People are considering about how we build community. And that's now going into a B2B world. So I find that very exciting because, you know, that's not going to go away. How people consume content, how you drive affinity how you create a community. Community is your fundamental, that's your foundation of your business. And I love the fact that businesses are waking up to that fact. The, 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 so that's personal to content, Cal. Point two is around, like, like I've been saying all throughout this, is, is social commerce. That's the thing that's going to be transformative to businesses following um, like Pinterest lead. 
uh, and what Pinterest are doing whilst they're on a very much the bleeding edge. I don't expect everyone to set up Pinterest shops tomorrow, but um, how we can start to see all of the trends orientating towards this mobile commerce and I'm very excited that the fact that small businesses now will actually have a really good platform to play on where they don't have to, you know, lose business continually to Amazon just for just for convenience. So that's what I'm excited about those two things. Awesome. A couple more questions. One is from Sophie asking on your thoughts, how often to post on TikTok? Um, for me, I am zero. I have zero expertise in TikTok, so I'm sorry, Sophie. I'll have to let you down on that one because I do not know. So, um, yeah, you need a TikTok a TikTok expert for that one. I just we, follow. I'm well, not definitely, if there is a demand, if everyone is jumping on the TikTok trend and trying to carve some space for themselves in this video kind of fast-paced world, then we will definitely have an expert. I will say we did have a kind of TikTok 101 introduction session last year with becca uh, so we'll link later on the session i can't right. recall straight away if she mentioned the frequency but she definitely gave a great overview of how to start with tiktok for business and we might get her back this year to do a update and what's new and how's it working and what she's learned over another year on being on tiktok so great question sophie sorry we don't have a more specific answer but we'll figure it out for you, we'll find the answer, we'll, or we'll find an expert to help you. Uh, Claire is asking, have you used the Q&A feature on Facebook? Uh, do you have any best tips on how to use it? Uh, so one, yes, yes, I have any best tips. Um, not, not really outside of the obvious stuff, because most of this, all of these things are not like rocket science or, or any kind of science behind it. It's a case of asking sensible questions regularly that will prompt the best discussion. And the best Q&As are always uh, things that are marginally polarizing. Um, so that that would be my my thing. Um, if you want to get people really commenting on something, not to, not to be deliberately provocative, but uh, Q&As that will encourage interaction where people are very passionate and take a stand on something. So whatever that is in your your industry. So for, as an example, in our industry, you know, a good topic of Q&A would be, uh, is paid social dead? You know, there's any point in paid social anymore? Q&A, because, you know, there'll be a lot of people that, are, that spend their time relying on it and that's their job and that's their business. So naturally, you'll hear a lot of good points around that. But the same for the people that kind of represent more kind of organic content. Um, those kind of Q&A, those things that will polarize opinion, drive fantastic interaction. Um, and as long as you've got a a really nice group and a really nice you know you need to moderate this stuff so make sure it doesn't you know go out of hand but um yeah polarizing is always the q a kind of questions you want not not like the vanilla ones where everyone agrees with each other yeah awesome claire says it's so helpful thank you and we'll take last question from eva she's asking where are you finding more detailed social media updates we see she checks your linkedin videos and weekly updates but she's looked more curious on where you're taking these resources. What are your sources for this information? So my sources, because they're, they're all in this deck, so you can have this deck. Um, and it really is, I, I subscribe to Social Media Today, uh, to so socialmediatoday.com. We Are Social Media is another site. So I get I get a daily digest email from there. So not all of those uh, these facts are good. Some of these are from massive reports that it takes like an hour to read and to, to get some of the data points out of. The problem with these reports, they're like 90% waffle and 10% real good stuff. So, you know, sometimes I just have to put in the hard yards to get some of the data points. But the social media updates, we are social media, social media today, and I subscribe to Matt Navarra's newsletter as well. So they're the kind of three things that if you want to get your stuff on a daily or weekly basis, um, Go there. Yeah, I would definitely say for me, your updates and Matt Navarra's Decode newsletter, and I've got all I need. It's kind of digested for me. I don't need to go through all the reports, but obviously you always share all your sources and links, even LinkedIn, you always have, this was the report, this was the thing. So there will be everything in there. So I think that's it for the questions. If you have any further questions, leave them in the comments. Andy is always around and checking what's happening. I'm just putting his offer again 
up there. So if you want to have a chat, want to understand a bit better how to do this, make sure that you book a strategy session. I will be sharing a slide deck. I will be sharing the links. I will be sharing everything in the comments and in the description in the follow-up communication so you will get all of that but thank you so much everyone for being here with us and watching live and commenting and thank you andy for a brilliant hour session hour right. ahead this i can see so many people getting ready to sign up to pinterest now <laughs> good i've done my sales job for them uh nice nice yeah well thank you for having me and thank you for such brilliant questions Thank you. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye.